Hey guys, Jess here. Gonna make a new favorite of mine. It's uh, roasted butternut squash with peppers. I have some poblano peppers, jalapeno, and red bell pepper. So here are the main ingredients that you're gonna need. Um, you can alter these. Uh, I was introduced to butternut squash um, just kind of recently. So I have a butternut squash here, two red bell peppers, two poblano peppers, and one jalapeno pepper. Uh, you can omit that if you don't like heat. I'm going to use the whole thing with the seeds and everything. Um, so let me start getting these prepped up. Uh, we're going to roast everything on this jelly roll pan so it has a nice lip to it. And that's going to allow us to roast everything without it all falling off the edges. So in terms of prep, butternut squash. So in terms of prep, butternut squash, we're just going to peel the entire butternut squash and it takes off that first layer. It's a fun little process. I just use a regular vegetable peeler. Just taking away that first layer and you have that nice beautiful orange color underneath it. It's funny, I cooked butternut squash for a soup once from a recipe a friend of mine gave me and turned out pretty terribly. It was user error. I did not execute the recipe very well. So I didn't cook butternut squash for a while. And then more recently, I just decided, you know what, I've got to give this a try again. It's the fall, it's the season. And so I decided to try roasting it. So I roasted it a couple of different times with different vegetables. Um, and I found I really like this particular mix of things because you get a little bit of heat from the jalapenos and the poblano and a little sweetness with the bell pepper. I also just like all the colors together so it's kind of fun. You eat with your eyes first right so might as well enjoy all the colors that you're getting. You just take off the entire peel. I'm going to make this tonight as a side dish. Um, the full meal is going to be the roasted butternut squash with the peppers. And then I'm going to cook up some mashed potatoes, just kind of straightforward mashed potatoes, nothing too fancy about them. I can cook them in my sleep, I think, so at this point. Um, and then I'm cooking up some chicken sausage. It's a uh, chicken turkey sausage mix. It's andouille flavored, so it's kind of spicy, which again, tying in the spice factor here. You could go with no spice altogether if you don't like heat. So once you have the entire guy all peeled up and nice this is the fun part we get to break it up so I tend to cut it right here down the part where you have the kind of bulby part and then the long part cut the ends off this is the part where you have to cut it in half and you get all those seeds on the inside so I just use a regular soup spoon nice round edge and I just scoop out the seeds you can save the seeds and you can roast these up. They really are very delicious, but it's a weeknight <laughs> and I don't have time for that. So I'm gonna take them out. Again, if you wanted to, you could save those, clean them off, rinse them off, dry them off, and then you can roast them after you're done roasting the butternut squash, which I have done and it really turned out very nicely, but if I had more time on a weekday, I would do it. <laughs> Okay, so it's kind of the big stuff all cleaned out. I'm tossing this part. Okay, so now we start cutting. You want a really sharp knife when you're doing this. And I kind of tend to cube it. 
probably pretty evenly sized pieces so that it roasts pretty evenly. But it doesn't take too long. So you can see the size pieces we're getting. And because I'm working in a small kitchen, I tend to have to do things in stages so I can make room for everything I'm doing. Now the other things I've prepared with this before, I've roasted it also with uh, carrots. Man, roasted carrots are just so good. <laughs> and I really enjoyed that. Um, I just did it on its own, just olive oil, salt and pepper, just the butternut squash by itself. That was my first experiment with it because I wasn't sure about the flavor and the texture of it, how it might go with other things. Um, so this is great as a side dish. I've also roasted it and put it in with a pesto I've made, which I really like. But once you break it down, it's actually like so easy to work with. And once you're roasting vegetables, man, it can't get any easier than that. Okay, so now I just make sure I've got all the peel off of the parts of the butternut squash. I'll take that end off. Again, just kind of cube it up about even size I mean if you ask me these are pretty close to even but not exactly so some of the pieces will cook a little faster than the others I don't mind that so much because some of the pieces will be a little more caramelized than others and I enjoy that so The thing I really like about this is once you roast it, it just brings out this beautiful flavor and this beautiful color. So you have this nice bright orange from the butternut squash, and then you add in the peppers to it. So the bell peppers, I just cut the tops off, I break out the seeds from the middle there. I just grab them out of the inside. them in the garbage. Same thing on this one. And that's my big trick, just pop it out, all the seeds come out. Just to give you a sense for this, I don't think you need to watch the entire process, but I'll kind of cut them into similar size pieces. Obviously they're not as thick, but they really caramelize nicely. And then the same thing with the poblanos, cut the top, pull the seeds out, give it a little pop. I take all the seeds and ribs out of the poblano, so it looks like this. Again, same deal, and I'll cut these about similar size pieces to our butternut squash, and then the jalapeno. I do kind of the opposite. I actually keep the entire thing and I just do a nice really fine dice on it and I keep all the seeds with it. And what I'll do is I'll break all that up and I'll put that on the dish with the uh, butternut squash. I'll do all that in just a minute. I'm going to take a pause. You don't need to watch all the bell peppers being cut. That, that's a pretty straightforward part. Okay. Be right back. All right, guys, we're back. All the veggies have been prepped. They're on the jelly roll pan together. I'm um, just using extra virgin olive oil. I just give it a nice pour 
over the top. And then I'm going to add some salt. And some fresh black pepper. And these are the only seasonings I use. All the flavors, kind of let them hang out and marry together. Now this is the fun part. Clean hands. Take those veggies and give them a little massage. I find cooking to be a great stress reliever. And this is one of the ways you get to play with your food. So I just kind of run my hands over everything. Mix up all the veggies. This is where the jalapeno is going to get broken up. The seeds, the ribs, all that is going to kind of get spread throughout. I'm going to try to mix up all the bell peppers and poblano peppers. And I kind of make sure that everything is nicely coated. Now, one thing I did forget to mention at the very start of this is your oven. Well, before you get started with anything, before you even start prepping your butternut squash, you want to set your oven. I tend to cook these at about 400 degrees, though my oven is a New York City apartment oven, so the temperature can range anywhere from 400 to 425, 430 then. So anywhere in that range is going to be okay. And these cook for about 30 minutes or so. You can even cook them for a little longer if you want them a little more caramelized. Now this is a pretty crowded pan. I try to go a little less crowded than this, but hey, we had a lot of veggies. We're going to cook them up. Um, so try to spread them out in one even layer that you don't have things piled on top of each other. What I'm going to do is in about 15 minutes of cooking, I'm going to come in and mix these up again. I'll use a spatula that time because they're going to be nice and hot. But I'll just spread them around again, make sure all the sides are getting browned and delicious. And yeah, then we come back and let them go. So it's about 30 minutes total, 15 minutes, give them a little mix up. Um, in the oven and then send them back in let them cook through and you can keep cooking them until you have a nice beautiful golden brown going on okay all right be back in a few hey guys about 15 minutes into our cooking process so i'm gonna pull the veggies out of the oven for a minute look how pretty they are everything's nice and coated and looking good you can definitely see the steam coming off of it. You can smell the peppers cooking, so if you don't like spicy food, definitely leave those jalapenos out. When they start cooking and the pepper oils start going, it really starts to take off. Um, but man, the poblanos are starting to caramelize, getting a little bit blackened. The little jalapenos are starting to cook up too. I can kind of feel even that the veggies are pretty tender now. So honestly, this next step in cooking is really how much do you want to cook them further? Um, you know, at, at this point they'd be edible, but I think the flavors really develop a lot more once we, once we let them cook for another 15 or so minutes. So they've been in for about 15 minutes. I'm going to put them in for another 15. I'll check on them then. If I want them to be a little bit more blackened or caramelized, then I'm going to let them go for longer. But for now... Let's let them keep going and see what comes out. So now I'll put them back in the oven, set my timer again. Again, these have been roasting somewhere around 425. My oven's a little wonky, so I set it for 375 and this is what I get. So let's see the final product pretty soon. Okay. All right, guys, here's our final look at everything. We're gonna put it all together. So pulling the veggies from the oven. Oh man. Check this out, awesome. We have some beautiful caramelized veggies happening here. I don't know if you can see them. smell -o vision delicious. So look at nice, beautiful tray of veggies. You can see they kind of shrunk down a bit. Um, so as I mentioned previously, this is a side dish. Um, I'm serving them tonight with some mashed potatoes. Put those on the plate. These are just Yukon Gold potatoes, boiled with skins on. Um, cooked them up. I used a rice potato ricer, so kind of broke those down. I just like to put all the veggies on top because they're so good. Check it. Delicious. And then that sausage I mentioned previously, it's that chicken 
andouille sausage so it's nice and spicy and that as they say is that that's dinner on a monday pretty good huh all right i hope you guys enjoy it and uh try it out let me know what you think okay bye